Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Rotel RA 930AX amplifier. <clears throat> in terms of specifications, power output is 30 watts into 8 ohms. The amplifier also uh, supports a remote speaker selection. So that means when you look at the rear you have two sets of speaker terminals. Frequency response is 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz with total harmonic distortion at 0.03%. And in terms of inputs, you have a moving magnet input, so this is the Fano setting. You can have AUX1, CD input, tuner, and then tape. And then for dimensions, you're looking at 440 millimeters by 304 by 92, with an overall weight of 5.9 kilograms. You also have a headphone socket and individual controls for both bass, treble, and your balance. And the tape monitor selection, you just operate them from a dedicated switch. So normally in vertical position, it would be for source, any of the inputs. And then when you flick it over, that will select then your tape input. Now, for myself, you know, I've repaired a number of these series of amplifiers over the years. Um, overall build quality is pretty good. I'd say that the Rotel amplifiers do produce a, quite a distinctive sound, you know, good, good quality sound. Um, probably the only thing which I'd sort of criticise with this series of amplifier is just the bottom casing, which maybe sounds a little bit strange, but everything else on this amplifier is metal from the case point of view. But then when you flip it over, it has this plastic case on there, which is a little bit strange. You know, why would Rotel, when they manufactured and sold this amplifier, why would you go down that route? The reason why I raise this is over time the plastic case becomes brittle, or the base plate becomes brittle. And then uh, where you have the different fixing screws, you may well find that the case just breaks away. Uh, so not, not ideal. Um, <clears throat> and some of the other series amplifiers, like the 800 series, you had a metal plate um, and no issue there. So just sort of slight criticism. So what was the issue when this amplifier arrived in? Well, it didn't have the classic um, protection fuses for the speakers, which normally you find blown, either one or two, but no other electronic faults as such. All fuses were intact, no issue. And then when the amplifier was put on test mode, um, a number of issues, but really what the main issue was, was that you couldn't actually get the left channel when you selected the remote speakers. So normally um, on the first speaker set, no problem, both left and right channel. As soon as you operated that remote speaker push button, one channel, you didn't get anything at all. Now, what I'm showing in the video is really what you tend to see when you first receive these amplifiers into the workshop. So once that top cover plate is removed, what you can see is this very, very heavy coating of dust. And this is because there's large vent holes in the top of the amplifier. What I'd also point out as well, and I'll come back to this a little bit later on, is that you do need to take care of the input selection switch and also the tape monitor switch as well, and tone defeat. And the reason for that is that they get filled up with dust. Now, in terms of fault finding, really quite straightforward, and I'll show again this in the video, you have a dedicated latching push button which selects those secondary sets of speakers. So once you got the bottom plate removed, you knew that there was no issue with the output state. So you had to have something to do either with the tracks leading to and from the switch, or it was the switch itself. Use an audio test signal coming in, so for me, that's one uh, kilohertz sine wave test signal that comes in, probably about 150 millivolts. And then what I can do then is I can just use the scope just to check as the signal comes through, altering the volume, absolutely nothing when the switch was operated. But on the common connection, you could see, yeah, good audio, good sine wave. So the next course of action, of course, is to remove the front fascia because I've got to get access to that switch and it's held in place also with two fixing screws. So once I've removed those, what I can then do is just desolder the selection switch. And then the next thing that I want to look at is what's happening internally. So just be careful when you sort of disassemble these types of push buttons. They are common in terms of design. The latching mechanism is used extensively on many other switches. For this Rotel amplifier, I don't hold in stock this switch. I presume it was an OEM part at the time. And it has quite long leads on it, so it's raised up from the board. Um, so probably not that easy to go and source. But the good thing is you can source uh, readily available other types of push button switches 
and I'm showing that in the video. So what I had to do was, of course, disassemble the switch. And then once I'd removed it, what I could see then, and I, again, I show this in the video where you can see there is a donor switch that I've used, a brand new one. And then when I've removed one of the contact, contacts, it was just sort of bent slightly and it wasn't making contact. So I presume at some point it had slightly worn, maybe jammed, and then opened up the contacts. So that, that sort of next connection was not being made. So with the donor switch, just take it apart. And then I was able then to get a new contact from there. And it's a little bit tricky reassembling these types of push button switches because you have uh, like a latch pin which comes over and then you also have a spring. So the latch pin has to be sort of hooked underneath. And then it's this small spring then that applies the pressure which enables it to go up and then come back down again. So just be what I would say is if you're going to sort of take it apart, maybe take some photographs just to make sure that you know how it goes back in and you might need to try a couple of times just to get that switching mechanism correct because sometimes if you don't get the spring aligned correctly it will just sort of operate but not latch. The other point to emphasize with this amplifier and this type of switch when you disassemble it you've also got a secondary spring which um, is, is used then just to sort of push the plunger back out when it disengages that's under quite a little bit of tension so when you're trying to reassemble the switch what you'll see there's plastic thin guides which enable it then to open up the contacts that they then slide onto the rear sliders inside of the switch you can't see them but you've got to align it quite precisely and then uh, almost you know you need another set of hands just as you push it in you can then put the latching mechanism in the correct orientation and then just clip it in place then and then what you have on the rotel switch you have this plastic collar and then you can then clip that on so this was out of circuit of course so i was able then to i wouldn't say this this was done in sort of five minutes probably took a good 20 minutes sort of assembling reassembling then just testing and then once i had good latching operation just use the multimeter then to verify that i had the switching contacts on both sides between the common and the normally open and stroke normally closed and everything was working fine um, because the switch was disassembled I also took the opportunity then to clean it up uh, also take some deoxid into there and just operating that many times and uh, that restored that missing channel when you did the remote selection of the switches of the speakers then I mentioned this earlier um, with this dust and dirt which fills into the switch contacts what you can find is intermittent loss of sound. You may also find intermittent loss of sound as well on the volume controls or maybe the balance controls as well. So commonly like on the Technics type amplifiers, they tend to go quite corroded. Uh, for the Rotals, you don't see that even if you strip apart the switch. So normally using deoxid just to sort of flow into there and just operate that many, many times for all of the switches and the potentiometers. And I show in the video that the amplifier is mounted vertically. I often do this where I can just run directly into the access holes on the potentiometers, the deoxid liquid, and then uh, take up any excess. And then again, you know, backwards and forwards multiple times. And it will clear the switches and they'll be good and give you some uh, good durability back on that. And then the final part of the uh, sort of repair and restore of this amplifier, as it commonly is the case with all older amplifiers just check the solder connections across the board uh, there was a few sort of suspect joints on the speaker terminals just where they started to sort of break away slightly so just reflowed all of those and then um, once that was done really the only final thing was to set the bias um, for the Rotel 930AX RA 930AX it's uh, four millivolts so you can see from the um, service manual extraction which I've got on this repair video you can see that you have TP2 and TP4 and this is showing here the right channel and what you do is you leave the amplifier sort of on test so no speakers connected balance treble and um, bass controls at midpoint and then your volume control at minimum and then after about five minutes uh, not a drafty environment should be uh, you know normal conditions you'll find that the amplifier will then stabilize i often uh, refer to this if these trimmers have not been moved since manufacture what you might want to do is just put a little bit of deoxid on there 
Uh, depower the amplifier before you do this. Just run a bit of deoxygen. Just rotate those trimmers backwards and forwards. Just clean those tracks up. And then return to the approximate position. And then repower up the amplifier. Again, you can sort of wait your five minutes if you wish. And then make the adjustment. So you would be adjusting here VR602, which is a 20, I think it's a 2.2K uh, trimmer until I read four millivolts and I show this again in the video you can see I'm connected across the test point uh, for the right channel and you can see the multimeter in the background indicating the uh, correct bias for the channel. Interestingly on this circuit schematic as well you can see S4 and this is the switch that we referred to earlier which was the speaker protection sorry which was the speaker selection switch so that was the one where we uh, we had to replace the contact on there. So that's it. Nothing too spectacular here. Not a lot of fault finding to be done as such. But uh, again, as always, I appreciate you stopping by for this rather quick repair overview. And if you have any questions or you need any assistance, by all means, email audio amplifier servicing at AOL.com. And I'll be more than happy to provide any help or assistance that you require. So until the next time, all the best and thank you. Goodbye.